Well, let me introduce you to our panel. Uh, Dr David Starkey, constitutional historian and broadcaster, one of our most popular panellists, it has to be said, over the last series. Uh, Lord Andrew Adonis. Uh, Andrew was on the first programme, I think, that we ever did of this programme. So welcome back to you, Labour peer. Christine Jardine, Liberal Democrat MP for Edinburgh West and Home Affairs spokesperson. You were actually on quite recently, weren't you, Christine? Actually, so yes. welcome back to you. <laughs> and Mark Harper, Conservative MP for the Forest of Dean, former Chief Whip and, more recently, uh, leadership contender for the Conservative Party. They're here to take your calls. Well, let's uh, crack on and go straight to your calls. Uh, Jackie is in Paul in Dorset. Hello, Jackie. What would you like to Hello, ask the panel? Hi. Well, uh, the Scottish judges want to remain, and the Scottish people generally, so they're perhaps biased. I wonder if the panel think these Scottish judges are biased. And anyway, the Queen's more wise than they are, so uh, she knows best what's going on. She's very old and very wise. Okay. And then there's another thing. Oh, go on, Do quickly. You think uh, the people in the Parliament are having to give in their telephones and their communications to see if they're biased, the Brexiteers, but I think the other side should have their phones tapped. And, and see oh, what I see what you mean. You, you mean the law on Monday that said that certain named individuals in Downing Street <coughs> were supposed to give up their uh, phone messages. Um, well, let's go to the only Scot on the panel, Christine Jardine. What, mm-hmm. what's, your, what's your reaction to that? I don't think it's fair to call the Scottish judiciary biased in any way, shape or form. They... David Starkey, you're the only constitutional historian around the table. What do you make of this? I think it's a profound and deep mistake. I don't think they're biased, and I think the charge, you know, because they're Scots, they're biased, is wholly wrong. I would absolutely agree on that. Um, I think the great problem is that we are mistaking the rule of law for the rule of lawyers. If you go back mm. to the fundamental document uh, which everybody has been citing, that is A.V. Dice's account of the English Constitution. So I am being high flown. No. You asked me at the beginning We're of this program. We're a high flown program, program right, David. Okay. Um, <laughs> it, it, the, the law of the Constitution of 1885, which is written immediately in the aftermath of democracy in this country. We have only been a qu- and women, of course, didn't have the vote. No. Only most men did at that point. What he does, he distinguishes there two forms of sovereignty. He distinguishes the legal sovereignty of Parliament and then he distinguishes the political sovereignty of the nation. Mm -hmm. And the great, the devastating, the dangerous thing is when judges rule on the political sphere. The proper sphere of law is to deal with the relations of the executive and the subject, for it to interfere in the proceedings of Parliament. Please, I didn't interrupt you let me finish, um, is deadly dangerous. And I can now go back even further. I've laid, referred to the late 19th century. Now let me refer to the document which is responsible for the fact that we have had everything you were talking about, Christine. Peace, peaceful government, the, uh, the unconflictful change from one political party to another, the absence of mostly street demonstration and whatever. That was the Bill of Rights of 1689. And what the Bill of Rights said, it tried to distinguish between the legal and the political sphere. And Clause 9 says that proceedings in Parliament should not be impeached or otherwise questioned in any other court. So or that's place. what the Supreme Court will likely concentrate well, I on. I know, next week. because for reasons that I do not understand, the government has not resorted to this. The whole problem of the Supreme Court judgment in the Gina Miller case, it was not put against this broad historical <clears throat> background. I have no idea who Nikki da Costa is, who's allegedly Boris Johnson's principal legal advisor. Their advice seems to me to be fundamentally wrong. Okay. Because this is also, just one final point, this is the issue that was debated by Jonathan Sumption uh, in his Wreath Lectures. What are the bounds of law? What are the bounds of politics? And I'm sorry, Christine, I'll just answer your final point. If judges rule on political matters where there is no obvious law to base themselves on, and it's simply three legal opinions against one legal opinion, I'm afraid what they're doing 
is political. And I will write the headline, Three Judges Against 17 and a Half mm. Million Well, voters. I think we can all write that headline. Um, Andrew Adonis, I, we, we, is we've required. heard a government minister this evening, Kwasi Kwarteng, was being interviewed by Andrew Neil. Yep. And he said, many Leave voters up and down the country are beginning to question the impartiality of the judges. They're saying, why are they getting involved in politics? Now, that's quite a serious thing for a government minister to allege, isn't it, of the ju judiciary? It, it's a bit Trumpian. Parliament, David, you want to come not in? in the Andrew, Andrew referred to the question of motive. This is one of the fundamental issues. Everybody knows that Jolyon Maugham, who brought the case in Scotland, is a passionate Remainer. In other words, well, all of the people that brought the cases uh, and Gina Miller. Passionate the great problem yeah. is these cases are couched in the form of law. They're actually a political tactic. And but there's this, nothing wrong with that, is no, there? There is. I'm sorry. To use the law like this, I would use a word, is wicked. But that's the job of the judges. Do you? No, yes. no, 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 it's to, not. It is. To it is the, I think, again, the. I've no idea how, why that the legal advice of the government has been so bad. The original Gina Miller case, the government's position from the very beginning should have been this is non judicable. This is not susceptible. These are political judgments and they are not susceptible to the course of law. And if you get judges, however impartial, I've, as you notice, I have not been impugning them, but whichever side they come down on, in what is really a judicial a use okay. of, of justice as a tactic in a political war, they will make an enemy of one side or the right, other. Christine. That's the deadly danger. Uh, let's go to our next question. Chris is in Richmond. Chris, what would you like to say? Good evening, everyone. Um, the Yellowhammer report has been released in the last half an hour. Um, and apparently key elements have been redacted. Does the panel agree with me that this shows that the government is levelling with people about the real consequences or potential consequences of an odio Brexit? This is going, you know, no one pretended this was going to be easy, particularly to be, fair yes, to, the, to be fair to the Prime Minister, the inheritance that he got You're going when on he theme took over. question, Master. Then you were asked about Yellowhammer. Can we get back to it? And the whole business that... Would you like to come and sit in my seat, David? Uh, no. I would, I'm just <laughs> helping you to do your job better. <laughs> you, said, I, well, I, you said at the beginning... I would you presume, wanted, David. You said you wanted okay, it to be on, a proper... On, you said on, you wanted, no, the you said on, you wanted it to be a proper debate. I do. And we, right, let's stick to Yellowhammer. Um, <laughs> the person who was largely responsible for the concept of freedom of information being legislated, in other words, Tony Blair and Tony Blair's government, said it was the worst thing that he ever did. This has got did. nothing to do with freedom and, of information. No, yeah, it, 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 it is, that is it fundamentally a, what... It's a parliamentary resolution, yeah, but, but, which but could it, have happened with or yeah, without freedom. Yeah, yeah, but, but sorry, the notion that all the business of government and all the documents before government should go into the public domain is a deadly one. Government, there's a phrase in Latin, we're being a serious programme, it's called the arcana impidii. It's the secret of government. All government has to depend to a very large extent on confidentiality it can't be done otherwise this notion that everything can be in public domain is pie in the sky and is deadly dangerous point one point two the whole issue with yellow hammer and why again why has it been as it were subpoenaed by dominic grieve and the rest why has it been subpoenaed because they think there will be evidence in it that there will be economic damage mm. this from the very beginning has the f been the fundamental mistake of the remain campaign the business about leaving the european union was a struggle about values it wasn't a struggle about whether we will be richer or poorer. It's Os finished, and then over to you. It was Oscar Wilde summarised it brilliantly. People who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. And the whole reason that the Remain argument has failed completely to shift public opinion, which it has done, is that it does not address <coughs> that basic problem. Okay. Well, the four years after the last referendum to then start a process of mm. negotiation again, when it's so clear that it isn't actually possible to produce a settlement okay. that, that meets the objectives set out by the Leavers for his I think that would Very clear. be nonsensical. Um, David Starkey? I wouldn't venture to uh, trespass on the private grief of the Labour okay, Party. OK, Mark Harper. Um, but, um, <laughs> but. Let, me just pick up, let me just pick up one thing that Andrew said, because it is very important. Why are we in the mess that we're in now? We're in the mess that we're in now because the sovereign parliament has rejected the real sovereign 
that's to say the sovereign people and quite simply that is what Dicey said there is the legal sovereign parliament there is the actual sovereign which is the people the reason parliament has done this is that the conventions which were established in the 1880s the party ticket you referred to Labour MPs having been uh, well the questioner a Labour manifesto uh, the, uh, the the Conservatives to a manifesto which said better no deal uh, than than a bad deal uh, the decision of Parliament the overwhelming decision to invoke article 50 what happened was in this Parliament the things that bind the legal sovereign mm. to the real sovereign which is whipping and uh, the whole process of parliamentary procedure in Erskine May, which has been deliberately torn up by the Speaker, that answerability has been destroyed. Parliament has deliberately prevented that decision. Okay. That's what, just one second. That is why we're in the mess that we're in now. And sorry, the blame needs to be pointed. This Parliament has sat for 810 days. Mm -hmm. It has passed no legislation. It has been unable to arrive at anything that it wanted to do. It was very clear what it did not want to do. The possibility of Theresa May's deal was voted down three times by Parliament. We are in an absurd position. A new referendum will not s settle the issue because if it is, as Andrew said, Theresa May's deal, which has been refused three times by Parliament and remain, everybody who voted out will say this is illegitimate. That referendum will settle nothing. It will simply increase what you, Christine, were pointing about, the bitterness, the hostility and the rage. I wonder the what... only thing that can happen is a general election. And then if Parliament fails again, we fail again as a nation to produce a clear majority in Parliament. I'm sorry, we are lost. I wonder there what are some Parliament... political situations which are not solvable. I wonder what this Parliament will, will be called in future history. But it's the been, Brexit we had the long yeah. Parliament of Pygmies. <laughs> I thought you were going to give it a Latin I'm, name. I was yeah. waiting for the I'm long Latin say, tag. I'm talk, no, Christine, <laughs> that's just on No, that. because just, I don't want to leave. But sorry, you were saying that your private judgment outweighs the judgment mm. of 17... No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, that I'm is not. your private personal judgment. To say that you can somehow detect the national she, interest. She's a in other words, I'm this is nanny speaking. As everyone is, to their own opinion. And 16... Of course you are. More than 16 million people, David, actually, we're going to throw numbers about, agreed with me. And those 16 million people are entitled to of a course voice. they are but and that could... voice is entitled to but be heard I couldn't agree with Christine, Christine could I this. couldn't agree more well, Christine your voice won't be heard if you don't oh, speak sorry, into yes. the microphone <laughs> Christine, Christine, Hold on, that Christine. makes a change <laughs> Christine, listen, Christine <laughs> there is Christ, a very Christine simple Christine point. Right, final point in maybe. democracy a majority finally has to carry the day. The Remain vote lost by a larger margin than almost any general election. If you actually look at the number of constituencies of the country, two-thirds or three-quarters voted leave. And I'm sorry. Okay. Democracy depends on loser's consent. You have denied it. Your party's title is false. Liberal, perhaps, not Democrat. Do, well, do no, you know I, you're just parroting what I said on question time last Thursday. I, 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 I say it more, more clearly. I'm going to say something. I am going to have to draw this to a close because we do want to get in two more questions before we finish at nine. It is quarter to nine. It's Anthony's in Staines. What would you like to ask, Anthony? Yes, good evening, everyone. I'd like to ask, could Gloriana, uh, aka Theresa May, return? Should <laughs> Boris Johnson's government completely implode and no one else wants the job? Of course, David, in the 19th century, um, and indeed in the early 20th century, there were prime ministers who did come back, weren't there? Regularly, some yeah. of them three and four times. Yeah. And it, it made, in many ways, for much better politics with serious experience. But, questioner, you called Theresa May Gloriana. That is <laughs> shameful, <laughs> disgraceful. The difference between <laughs> Queen Elizabeth I and that awful <laughs> hag who has oh, disappeared. Oh, David. She, oh, David, I'm David sorry. she deserves no... no I'm she sorry. Deserves, no, she deserves no... You cannot use a word like well, that. Well, then I'll use another word. She deserves no... Well, let's no make it a kinder word, shall we? Yes. Woman. Yes. Um, Thank you. Uh, she deserves no pity. She put herself forward. She was infinitely incapable. She was very much like Gordon Brown. She thought she could do the job, and she couldn't. She had absolutely none of the capacities. She couldn't form policy. She couldn't reason about policy, and she couldn't present policy, and she couldn't handle colleagues. No, the th if I had but a none job of those things make her the word that you just said. 
I think mm. you'll accept that. All right. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I do think that... Da- right, I apologise. The word was... R- the unique thing from David Stock. The word was wrong, but why I feel so strongly about it is the damage that woman did. The damage that she did to the country, to her party, by her gross okay. incompetence. And so we need to start saying this about politicians. The traditional thing is... But we when can somebody, do it in kind of gentle well, language, I've can't we? I've now been doing it. Yes. Um, yes. That, but we need to have condemnation. There is the usual business of... Oh, believe me, we're plots. getting plenty of it, David. <laughs> We're not getting enough. Right. I mean, Let's move really on to um, Anthony. Quick response from you. I can't believe that you're, you're really serious in asking that question. To be honest, uh, I really am because I think she really is strong and stable. After all, Elizabeth was in the tower and she nearly lost her head, and she came back after Mary um, tried to you know chop her head off. And I think Theresa May has got the dedication, so I contradict what David Starkey said, all right. and I say that she was not a hag. Okay, well, I think we can all agree on that now. Uh, Glenn is in Bradford. Glenn, what's your question, please? Yeah, hello. Um, I just wonder if, to, if today's, given today's ruling in the Court of Sessions and a Supreme Court judgment that goes against it on Tuesday could be um, a further massive nail in the coffin of the Union. You will have a Scottish court making one decision, an English court making another decision, a Supreme Court that in Scotland could be seen as English, despite the fact I think there's four yeah. judges, four Sc- yeah. Scottish judges mm. sitting right. on it, yeah. could be, or, you know, Scott saying why Four are we Scottish judges out of, is it the, 12? The, That's quite a lot, isn't nine, it? Nine, isn't it? I think there's four Scottish judges on it, I think I heard on the radio today. In fact, the, the, the chair of the court, or if he's a chair of the court, is actually Scottish as well. Right. So, okay, well, we'll see, we'll see what the fact... So you think that could contribute to the breakup of the union? Mark Harper. Uh, well, I, I don't agree with that. I think the Supreme Court is the United Kingdom Supreme Court. It has a balance of judges. Decision. Okay. Andrew Dennis. Well, the reason it's called the Supreme Court is that it's supreme. Yeah. I mean, you have to, in a legal system, have a court which is at the top of the tree, which takes these ultimate decisions. So I, I don't think it's fair to say that because the Supreme Court does its job and it's there to do a constitutional job, that it's somehow setting one part of the judiciary against another. It, we invest the Supreme Court with this power. It has judges from all parts of the United Kingdom on it, and we should go with its judgment. Can I just say that I, I was actually alarmed when I saw the, the judgment this morning not not at the judgment itself but at some of the language that was used outside the court of session about you know talking it, it was blaming you know an English system and all. I do think the caller's right we have to bear in mind the damage that we are doing to the union and think strongly about protecting it and get away from throwing bric-a-brac at one part okay. of the country and another David Starkey I think that is absolutely right. The real blame in this ra- relies on a showman, a legal showman like Jolyon Maugham, for bringing the case in Scotland. David um, really doesn't like Jolyon Maugham, does no. he? And I think he's, I'm he's not but, alone in that. Yeah. He's not <laughs> alone in that. If there is, as it were, the exacerbation of relations across the border, that is where the blame lies. My terrible fear, and I return to what I said at the beginning of the programme, is that the judgment of the Supreme Court will not be accepted, not on grounds of dividing the union it will not be accepted because however it is arrived at it will be seen as a blatantly political judgment and um, and however well explained legally everybody knows the case has been brought by remainers if the judgment comes down on that side irrespective of the law it will be seen as a remainer judgment if you go back to the original case before the supreme court the principal dissenting judgment mm-hmm. you know it's a very <coughs> large bench i think it was eight and i think there were three dissenting i think eight in favor and there were three dissenting voices and um, the first of the dissenting voices said exactly what i'm saying now the law should not get involved here and particularly the law should not get Get involved in foreign policy. Can well, I just, just no, one second? No, 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 please, we, we Christine. We're nearly at the please, end of the program. There has to be the nation. Ha- you were talking about the nation and union. Don't in foreign correctly. policy, the nation has to speak with one voice. Yep. Only one voice can yep. do that, and it's the right. government. And the the the, the remainers have deliberately destroyed the unity of okay. government. Christine, twenty seconds. Just in Julian's defence, those of us who raised the original action about Article Fifty, and those who raised this action. Did it because they live in Scotland, their constituents are in Scotland, and the court that they apply to is the court of session. And it happened to be Quite in simply. session, unlike yeah. the English courts. Yeah. Um, Louise in Edinburgh texts, who should replace John Burko as Speaker of the House of Commons? Um, I don't know if, as a peer, you have a view on this, Lord Adonis. 
Oh, I think having a peer as a speaker of the House of Commons would be an excellent idea. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think yourself, for that. example. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think they'd put up with that. <laughs> but who would you like to see? Well, we were them? discussing Theresa May earlier. If what wants to no, move no, from no, one not extreme Theresa to the May. other, no, uh, one, I, one I, candidate I, sort of declared. I, I, I like Harriet Harman. I think she <gasps> command, I think she commands the oh, House so you, of Commons. You, you, and, you and said be a great that speaker. deliberately to wind David up, didn't because you? Because she has said she is the but careful, careful. She has said she is the Burko continuity candidate. She has. That will be catastrophic. Burko single-handedly, his monument of the scenes in the House of Commons at the dissolution, uh, the, the prorogation. They are disgraceful. His they play, were not his fault. They were entirely his fault. He played up to it. He enjoyed it. He loved it. Who would you like to see replace him? I don't care, providing they say... <laughs> providing right, do you know what I, want to hear? <laughs> what I want to hear is there is a sensible <laughs> so, government that carries a resolution <laughs> through the House of Commons which says that everything that Burko did is not precedent oh. because he tore up the whole of the rule book that has bound parliament to the people so it was a deliberate act of Chris it is Actually, absolutely we, we true we literally only have about 40 seconds left so if you can you and mark can be very quick harriet harman harriet harman two nil uh, i'm i think eleanor lang would be fantastic she keep the good bits of john burko about empowering the house of commons oh. but she thinks we should hear more of members of parliament and less of the speaker so I, she'd get my vote well, thank you all very much indeed. I think we have achieved a broadcasting first this evening in getting an apology out of David Starkey. <laughs> um, Mark Harper, David Starkey, Andrew Adonis, Christine Jardine, thank you very much. Thank Bye. you.